So we've got to replicate our shifts. That's why this church, that's why the Motleys were able to turn their church over to their son. That's why the Dechachos are where they are. That's why this church is where it is, is because they are developmental leaders. They've replicated themselves in others. This is the first thing I had to learn right here. That is the very first thing that you as a leader must learn and must understand, and that is there's no Lone Ranger leaders. You cannot do it by yourself. And there are too many pastors today that think that, you know, their, 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 their way is the only way. As a matter of fact, I wasn't going to do this, but I believe I will. There are four types of, there are four types of leaders. Write these down. There's the positional leader. The positional leader. Now beside that, write the word authority. The positional leader. That's the leader that thinks he's a, uh, that's the person that thinks he's a leader because he's got a title. And they think it's my way or the highway. Jesus is the only one that could have done that. And Jesus didn't do that. Jesus knew that the only authority that he could walk in was in the spirit. And that's what he did. But I used to be this leader. I was a positional leader. When we first started our church, you know, touch not God's anointed. Don't, don't challenge the pastor. Pastor knows everything. Well, I didn't know everything, but I made everybody think I did. And, you know, and, and not only that, I, 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 I thought God sent all the non-thinkers to Agape Faith Church. He sent everybody that could think and that had any brains at all. He sent them to the church down the road. And the reason he did that was because I wouldn't let them think. Because I didn't care what they thought. Because I thought my way was better than their way, so what difference did it make what they thought? Are y'all with me? Because at that time, it was my way or the highway. And you know how many leaders there are like that? Corporations know that will not fly. Leaders like that run a corporation in the ground. Can y'all say amen? The second type of leader is an operational leader. Operational leader. Out beside that, I want you to write the word results. Results. An operational leader is a type of leader that thinks people are going to follow them as long as they meet their need. They'll do everything they can to meet people's needs. I thought when God had us start our church in Clemens, that I was, the, I, I was the great savior of Clemens and everybody. And, and, and I would run around and I would do everything I could to meet everybody's needs. Do you know Jesus did not do this? Right. Jesus stepped over people and went to one man and said, do you want to be made whole? He said, well, I don't have anybody to put me in the water. He'd been there 38 years. My God, I think I could have slid over by the edge of the pool in 38 years and fell in. Are y'all with me? But... But, he, but, but, but we don't try, you can't meet everybody's needs. And if you're that leader and you think people are going to follow you because you're going to meet their needs, can I share something with you? They're going to have a need you can't meet. And when you can't meet it, they're going to go find somebody else that can. I violated my family. Matter of fact, I committed adultery early on in the church. See, it always gets quiet when I say that. <laughs> it wasn't with a woman. Well, it wasn't with a man either, all right, but, <laughs> but, uh, but it was with the ministry. I committed adultery with you young pastors. Don't do that. Don't do that. I committed adultery with the ministry. I, I gave everything I had to people when I got home. I had nothing for my wife. Sure, and I had nothing for my children. I hurt my children. I hurt them. Because I thought I could meet everybody's needs, and yet I didn't meet the ones that were the most important to God in my life, and that was my family. Shoo. The next one is the relational leader. The relational leader. Now, beside that, I want you to write the word love. The relational leader is the leader that thinks everybody's going to follow them because they love them or because they like them. I used to lose, I would lose sleep at night. 
I mean, in high school, I mean, my mother died when I was young. My father was an alcoholic, and he kept telling me I'd never amount to anything. And so I fought the spirit of rejection. And I'd make up for it by trying to be funny and loud and all that. And, uh, and, I, and I, uh, I fought it all through high school, and I dealt with it. And, uh, and so when I, when I got, uh, as I grew into an adult, I, I wanted to make sure that everybody liked me. And I would lose sleep if I thought somebody didn't like me. You know what? I could give a rip now. <laughs> hey, if you like me, that, if you don't like me, that's your problem. And there are some people that don't like me. I can't understand why, but, <laughs> but I know there are. I have, hey, I was preaching one Sunday morning. I told our church, I said, listen, I just want you all to know, you don't have to be like me. I'm loud. I jump up and down in praise and worship. I shout. I mean, I talk fast. I said, I'm, you ain't got to be like me. So we, come, we hugged necks at the door, and we come, and this little woman came through the line. She's about that tall. She looked up and said, thank you, Pastor. I thought, whoa, she's really about to give me, whoo. She said, I said, thank for what? She said, for telling me I don't have to be like you. <laughs> I think that was a compliment. I'm not quite sure. But, but I just hugged her neck. Hallelujah. Listen. You, you, not, not everybody's going to like what you do, like the changes you make, but you got to do it as a leader. Can't be concerned about whether people like you or not. I mean, think, come on now. Uh, Jesus didn't care. Jesus looked at a whole crowd out there, and he said, uh, y'all are not here because you want to hear what I got to say. You're out here because we had fish and chips in the desert yesterday for lunch, and you want to know what's for dinner. And Jesus said, I'll tell you what you're going to have to do. You're going to eat my flesh and drink my blood. Jesus lost his whole church overnight. And he looked at the 12 and said, are y'all going too? He wouldn't ask that question if they hadn't have been thinking about it. Are y'all with me? So you can't be concerned about that. And then the last type of leader is the developmental leader. The developmental leader. Now beside that, I want you to write the word replication. The de developmental leader. Right beside that, right, replication. Jesus spent three and a half years doing this. And it looked like he'd failed miserably. I mean, he had one that turned on him. One, uh, all of them denied him. I mean, he had a miserable crew. I mean, some, I mean that, uh, so, but he spent three and a half years doing what? Replicating himself in those twelve and then another 72, and then finally 120. So when Jesus, the spotless Lamb of God, who knew no sin, the perfect man, who was the Word, not just preached the Word, He was the Word, that Jesus, when He went to heaven, His church was only 120 members. Now, so we shouldn't be too concerned about numbers. Why? Because that 120 changed the world. Yeah. And we're all a part of what they did. Yeah. Can you say amen? amen? So we've got to replicate ourselves. That's why this church, that's why the Motleys were able to turn their church over to their son. That's why the Dechachos are where they are. That's why this church is where it is. It's because they are developmental leaders. They've replicated themselves in others. Can you say amen? amen? 